maybe he can get some inside information from the Cowboys or from the Ravens. Actually, I'm not really that worried about the Ravens. So if Michael Kendrick's going to risk it all to get some inside info on the team that we face, get it from the Cowboys because we got a lot of questions to answer there. So go on, tap, tap, tap in, Michael. The Patriots get away with it. So... Yeah, yeah. another video with me your favorite Eagles fan yes all the way in Atlanta but today we're gonna be talking about the linebacker position okay so the Eagles signed free agent linebacker Jatavis Brown in the offseason um, during the peak of free agency Jatavis Brown's 26 year old young linebacker we got him from the Chargers and then all of a sudden just in the middle of 2020 where all the crazy things happen. So really, it's really not that crazy. Jatavis Brown retired at the little old age of 26. I guess he didn't want to win this Super Bowl ring with us because we about to get a Super Bowl ring this year. But okay, that's fine, Jatavis. Have fun in the villas. Actually, retirement sounds good. But anyway, that leaves us with a big question. Should we sign a linebacker? Should we sign a linebacker? Our li Let me give y'all a rundown on what our... First of all, our linebacker group is ranked 27th right now in the NFL. All of our guys are under the age of 27 as well. That's the buzz number. We have so many young guys. We don't really know exactly what they can do, but they haven't really proven that much for us. We really could... The question is, should we sign a veteran linebacker? Should we sign a veteran linebacker? So we did lose one of our biggest veteran presence on the defense of Malcolm Jenkins. We lost him in the offseason. So not only is the linebacker position fresh, but we lost one of our strongest, um, I would say, veteran leaders on the team in Malcolm Jenkins. And Malcolm Jenkins played safety, and he helped those linebackers on the field. Do you know? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Move, nah, nah. He told them what was up. So all of our linebackers are fresh. So Alex Singleton, he had zero career starts. Duke Riley, 25 years old, 16 career starts. Nathan Jerry, the guy who's looking like our best bet, 15 career starts. TJ Edwards, four. Sean Bradley, obviously a draft pick, zero. Davion Taylor, obviously a draft pick, zero. So between those guys, we barely have any starts. Those guys are fresh. They are young. They need some guidance on the field. So let's talk about Nathan Jerry because Nathan Jerry is the guy that y'all are saying this is our best bet at holding down the linebacker position if we don't get anyone else. Now, Nathan Jerry did play into the postseason last season, so that's good for him. And he did improve from um, 2018 to 2019. However, tackling was an issue for him. And do you guys know we play tackle football, okay? This is still tackle football. I know they softened up the rules, but this is still tackle football. Nathan Jerry was ninth worst in the league in tackle. Now, mind you, he was second best on our team in tackles behind Malcolm Jenkins. Um, of course, shout out that guy that we missed. But league-wise, he was some cheeks, y'all. He was ninth worst in the league in tackles. He missed 17.9% of his tackles. So, knowing that that's our best guy right now, still a very young dude, he did improve from 2018 to 2019, but he still is like, are we going to be able to trust him as like a third down linebacker? That's the big question. So we all know that Jim Schwartz isn't even really a guy that really depends on the linebacker. George, Jim Schwartz, our defensive coordinator, he's a guy that likes that nickel and dime defense, meaning more defensive backs less linebackers um he likes guys that are quick that are physical i mean that are athletic quick athletic physical too and have good hands he doesn't really rely on that big linebacker we used to see in like the ray lewis days and like the troy palomalu he is really like 
a nickel and dime kind of dude. Like, load up the defensive back. Let's put five DBs on the field. Let's get after these guys with our hands and with our feet and with our quickness, not necessarily with our body size. In a 2017 press conference, Jim Short says, I don't need guys named Hammer and Tank. I need guys named Swifty and Ballhawk and The Glove. Those are the nicknames we're looking for now, he said in 2017. Obviously, our Super Bowl years. So are we going to get a linebacker, guys? Because we loaded up on DBs. We're loaded down on DBs. Can't even pick who's going to be starting, who's going to be number two. Not only can we not pick who's going to be number one, y'all, we still have a trouble picking who's going to be number two. We got so much depth when it comes to the DBs. Is Jim Schwartz going to go get another linebacker? He might be cool with... You know, these young guys, this young talent that we do have. We do have our third round pick, LB, Davion Taylor out of Colorado. Um, Davion has so much potential, but we really, you never know with these guys. Guys can come out, break out, be that dude day one. But we don't, he's fresh to the game of football, you guys. He's really fresh to the game of football. So we really can't expect to see him coming out, like making that much of an impact or really being like worked into the plays that much early but we can definitely expect to see him on special teams early but um yeah i don't think we're gonna expect to see him really getting that much involved in you know traditional defense behind nathan jerry we can look out for tj edwards who was pretty productive in the run defense game last season but he didn't get that much experience in pass coverage so we don't know exactly what he can do there. We already know our run defense is elite with that stellar defensive line. We don't necessarily know what he can do in pass coverage, but he did post a 77 grade um, last season in his position. And I feel like if we don't get anybody else, we're definitely going to see TJ Edwards having a step up. He's very athletic. Um, he still has a lot of room for growth. So we definitely can't expect to see him have to be that guy who has to step up next man up we literally haven't drafted a first round linebacker since 1979 and have the lowest amount of cap space allocated to the linebacker group so i don't know if jim schwartz is rocking with a linebacker right now i mean looking at our history we don't be rocking with the linebackers but let me get into one of the big possibles for us which is michael kendricks now the Seahawks took a chance for him on him while he was under investigation. He was very productive for them playing in four, starting in 14 games before he got injured. So the big question is, will a team take a chance on him knowing that his sentence isn't going to be, we have no idea what he's going to get sentenced for his um, insider trading. But they keep postponing it. Now they're saying it's postponed indefinitely. But he was under investigation and he played guilty when Pete Carroll took a chance for, on him and if Pete Carroll can have him in his defense under investigation we can have him in our defense as well we had him on our 2017 starting defense starting linebacker Michael Kendricks could we see him coming back to the Eagles or staying a Seahawk it's not off the table for the Seahawks to keep um to re-sign Michael Kendricks um they did draft a linebacker in the first round of the draft with Jordan Brooks and they got Bruce Irvin back so it's not really looking good for Michael in Seattle, but it's not off the table. We know Seattle likes to have depth, um, especially in that booming defense. So maybe they might sign him to a little one-year deal. Um, but Michael Kendricks really could come to the Eagles and be a rotational linebacker, and he knows the defense. He was only two years removed from the defense. We still have Jim Shores, the same guy, still has the same mindset when it comes to what he wants um, and his defensive schemes. I mean, he was a second round draft pick for the Eagles in 2012. He won a Super Bowl with us. So we got loves for him, okay? It's just, will we bring him back? Now, let me read off his stats from last season. So he started in 14 games. He has 71 combined tackles, one interception, four pass deflections, three sacks. Now, this is not the traditional offseason. He was hurt at the end of last season. He was just cleared by his medical staff. This is the traditional offseason. So if we're going to bring somebody in, we could very well be bringing in Michael Kendrick, someone who already knows the playbook, already familiar with a lot of the guys that are still on defense. We still have a lot of defensive players and our defensive coordinator from our Super Bowl team. So he's very familiar with the team, um, very familiar with the playbook. And he's going to be hungry. He's going to be looking for something to prove because a lot of people are saying, will he get signed? Will he get signed? So he can be thirsty. He's going to be hungry. He's going to be ready 
to um, prove himself. So that's the kind of guy that we definitely need in 2020 is a guy that wants to play and is energized. Um, he wasn't very good in run defense last um, season. However, like I said, we have some good, like I said, TJ Edwards was um, pretty effective in the run defense. And our defensive line is already stellar. So if he can help out in pass coverage where the younger guys don't have that much experience, um, if he can help out there, then that will be golden because that's really what we need. Um, so let me know what you guys think. What do y'all think about our linebacker group? Can y'all see Jim Schwartz going or, you know, just the Eagles as a whole going after our linebacker? Which we just talked about how they really don't value the position. Or do you see us signing someone or developing these guys and trusting these guys that we already have? Um, let me know what you want to see in my next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your friend. Check out my channel. Bye.